So a few days ago, I released my review on the Galaxy S23, and I got a bunch of comments asking me to compare it to the iPhone 14. I mean, it makes sense. Like both of these phones are $799, so they're very comparable in terms of price point. They're even comparable in terms of design. But it really depends on your situation. Like if you are enveloped into the Apple ecosystem, you're using a MacBook and an iPad, just buy an iPhone, stop watching this video, your life will be easier. And the same holds true if you're into the Samsung ecosystem. Everything's just gonna work and talk to each other more efficiently. But if you don't care about that, then hopefully this video gives you an idea what phone makes more sense for you. Now, I will say if you are buying the Galaxy S23, I don't know if the pre-order deal is still happening. For $799, they're giving you 256 gigabytes of storage instead of 128. Take advantage of it because they're giving you faster storage. You get faster RAM and the overall experience will matter years to come. Design-wise, they're very identical in a lot of ways. Like they're 6.1 inch devices. And even though they look pretty much the same size, the iPhone is a tiny bit heavier, it's a tiny bit taller, a tiny bit wider, and it's a bit thicker. You don't notice until you pick both devices up in the hand. Is it a massive difference? Absolutely not. I'm nitpicking here. But the iPhone does feel a bit more uncomfortable to hold in the hand because they made the edges a bit on the sharper side. It's a bit more boxy. When you're holding it like this, it just doesn't feel as good as the Galaxy S23. Like this is a slipperier phone, not to the point where it's gonna like fly off a table, but because they smoothed out the edges and rounded them a bit more, I find like I can hold this for significantly longer than the iPhone 14. On the back, they have these big camera sensors. You obviously get the extra telephoto lens with the S23, but the bump on the iPhone 14 is more dramatic. So if you're flat on the table and you're tapping your phone display to do something, then it's gonna wobble a lot more on the iPhone. Again, if you're using a case, this means nothing, but if you're one of the few maniacs out there who go caseless, then this might be important to you. Speaker placement is identical. You get one at the top and of course one on the bottom of the phone. I will say that the speakers on the iPhone do sound better. They're louder, they're deeper, they're just better sounding overall. Also a public service announcement for S23 users, there's a little hole right beside the SIM card tray. And just be careful when you're putting your tool in, make sure you stick it in this hole, because if you put it in this one, you might pop something and I don't want you to break your phone. Now the displays are interesting because you have slightly less bezel on the Galaxy S23 and because there's a bigger notch on the iPhone, you technically get slightly less screen real estate but the benefit of it is you get Face ID. If I had to choose one, I personally prefer Face ID over the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner on the S23. Not that this is slow or anything, like it's very consistent, you log in quite quickly, it's just that by the time I'm lifting the phone to my face, I've already logged in. Like I don't have to do anything else. So that's kind of nice, especially when you're outdoors in the winter. Both of these devices are rocking glass backs, but you do have the newer Gorilla Glass Victus on the Galaxy S23. Button placement's a bit different, like they both have the power button on the right hand side, but the volume rocker is there as well. With the iPhone, the volume rocker is on the left hand side, but you also get a dedicated mute switch. The weird thing though is that wireless charging is actually faster on the iPhone if you use MagSafe. It's like five watts faster. But in terms of wire charging, the Galaxy S23 can do it at 25 watts compared to 20 watts on the iPhone. As for the display, this is where things defer a little bit. If you buy the Galaxy device, you're getting 120 hertz refresh rate, an AMOLED display with a full HD panel. The iPhone is using a Full HD Plus panel, it's also OLED and it also looks really good. The only thing that I don't like, and again this is very subjective and it only applies to me, is that I can't handle a 60 hertz refresh rate anymore. When you change your monitor and your TV and all your phones to high refresh rates, your eyes begin to notice it. And when I scroll through this and then switch over to the iPhone, I feel like my eyes are being stabbed. And now granted this is not gonna matter to like 99.9% .9 of other people out there, but if I had to choose one display, I'm gonna take the Galaxy display any day of the week. On top of that, you also just get more peak brightness. Like this can go up to 17 
150 nits, where I think the iPhone tops out at 1100 or 1200 nits of peak brightness. So if you're outdoors and the sun is shining, the Samsung device is gonna get a bit brighter. As for performance, I didn't see much of a difference between both phones. I don't think I've used a flagship phone in the last three years that performed poorly. Like we're at the part right now where hardware is just so good that it's just really hard to have a bad experience. But for you Geekbench nerds, the Galaxy S23 is still slower, not by a lot, than the A15 Bionic, which came out in the previous year. But again, uh, these phones feel fast. If anything, I personally find the S20 to be, or S23 rather, to be slightly faster just because of the animations and of course that higher refresh display. But in terms of loading up things up, using specific applications, I'm not seeing that big of a difference. If we're talking battery life, that's where things start to get interesting because even though the S23 got bumped up to 3,900 milliamp hours and the iPhone 14 I think is around 3,200, battery life is still better on the iPhone 14. For example, if I push this S23 hard, I'm getting like five and a half to six hours of screen on time. Whereas the iPhone, I'll get about 30 to 35 minutes more. These are not two day phones, but they're definitely one day phones and you won't have any battery anxiety. So the front facing camera is interesting because the Galaxy S23 got bumped up to 12 megapixels this year, putting it in line with the iPhone 14. But based on the photos I took, it comes down to a few things. If you're white like me, I found that the iPhone did a better job with my skin tones, whereas the Galaxy device tended to make my skin look a bit more yellow. Now I did get some comments from my Asian audience who said that the Galaxy device tends to do a better job with Asian skin tone. So if you are Asian, you might prefer the front facing camera on the Galaxy device than what the iPhone 14 can do. All right, so now you're looking at the front facing camera on the Galaxy S23 versus the iPhone 14. Galaxy can do UHD 30, whereas the iPhone 14 is stuck at HD 30. You guys let me know which one sounds better, and of course, which one actually looks better. The rear camera is a different story. You get more value for the dollar with the Galaxy S23 because you have an extra lens to utilize. There's a third lens, 10 megapixel telephoto lens, allows you to optically zoom up to three times. If you need to get closer to a subject, you can do that without having to move your feet. The iPhone doesn't have a telephoto lens and the most it could digitally zoom is five times, which is pretty low for a smartphone. If you wanna digitally zoom to something, this can go up to 30 times, allowing you to get objects far, far away. But when it comes to actual color science, it depends on what you like. Like both phones do a good job. Outdoors, I found that the iPhone tended to be a bit warmer, also slightly more contrasty. I found the images overall to be slightly more appealing. The Galaxy device was more on the sharper side. Images looked cleaner, but it didn't have that same punchy effect that the iPhone was offering. But when it came to nighttime photography, I'm gonna give it to the Galaxy device because it did a better job of grabbing more information of the object that I was taking up. There were times where the Galaxy device just looked better, but then there were times that both devices were trading blows. And in some situations, the iPhone looked better. If I had to pick one over the other, I'd probably lean towards the Galaxy device. In certain situations, the S23 tended to smooth out the image a bit more, whereas the iPhone just introduced a bit more digital noise. As for video, the S23 can now shoot 8K, which is something the iPhone can't do, but most of my tests were done at 4K because I feel like that's what most people are still using. Slightly better stabilization on the Galaxy S23, but way better dynamic range and contrast using the iPhone. And if you're planning on using these devices to use action mode or steady shot on the Galaxy S23, it's the same story. Better video on the iPhone, but because the S23 can shoot action mode at QHD instead of Full HD, the image was a little bit more crispy and clean compared to what the iPhone was showing. Now, I'm not gonna go too deep into software because these are both very different operating systems, but personally, I prefer Android in general. I love the customization, I love the way it functions, and I still prefer the notification system over what the iPhone can do but I do like the consistency that iOS does offer. Apps seem to work a bit better, at least most of them. For example, if you're huge into posting on social, if you're posting directly through the app, it's gonna look a lot better on the iPhone compared to what you can do with Android. Now, don't get me wrong, Samsung has made improvements with some applications where you don't have that issue, but it's not 100%. The other thing I noticed is that on the Samsung phone, I have to use two wallets, Samsung Pay and Google Wallet because some banks don't work with Samsung Pay and some banks don't work with Google Wallet. Not a big deal and this is more of an issue here in Canada and this has to do with the banks not making their apps optimized for both wallets. So it's a bank issue, not a phone issue. 
but with the iPhone, everything works with Apple Pay. Now the big question, which phone should you buy? If you're ready deep into an ecosystem, stick with that ecosystem. You're gonna have less headaches and it's gonna play nicer with all of your devices. But if all you care about is the phone and nothing else, personally, I would gravitate towards the Galaxy S23. My reasons are a bit more selfish and it's more of my personal thing where I just have to have a high refresh display. If you don't care about that, then it comes down to two things. If you're mostly taking video, then you should go for the iPhone. If you're mostly taking pictures and you still want good video, but you don't want the best video, then I would go with the Galaxy S23. For everybody else, you're probably gonna have your own reason why you choose one over the other. And I personally would love to know what it is in the comment section down below. If you're interested in picking up any of these devices, there'll be links in the description. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.